بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از رستم اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ریکارڈ دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف مائی لیکچر آن دا ٹاپک ڈیزائن فیچرز آف لینگویج سو ان مائی پریویس لیکچر آئی ہیڈ ڈسکسڈ فور کی فیچرز آف ہیومن لینگویج اینڈ دس از سیکنڈ پارٹ سو بفور آئی پروسیڈ فردر I would like to announce <coughs> a very important note that is uh, video quality enhancement. So you are requested to hold the uh, Android phone horizontal in, in your hand and uh, also go to the right top corner and click on three dots and uh, change the video quality from lower pixel to higher pixel. and uh, if you are watching it at laptop or desktop computer please uh, change the setting from we like setting button uh, orientation of the screen as i just mentioned that it should be, you should hold the uh, mobile phone in horizontal uh, mode and watch the video in full screen mode audience of this lecture is uh, bs english third semester students studying introduction to linguistics uh, at government degree college avelia uh, i uh, usually uh, consult these four works in order to prepare my lectures on introduction to linguistics ja use book study of language already given in photocopied form to uh, bs english third semester students then ja ichsan book Uh, the title is linguistics and introduction and uh, the articulate mammal and last one is dr tarik rahman's book linguistics for beginners in my previous lecture uh, i just gave you uh, two definitions of language and uh, then i discussed uh, charles hockett uh, the american linguist who gave a series of lecture spanning over 10 years in these lectures he talked about defining features of uh, design features of language because language cannot be defined in one uh, you know sentence or in a, in a paragraph so he uh, itemized uh, characteristics features of language and uh, with the help of those features he differentiated human communication system with uh, from animal communication system these are uh, key features okay uh, found only in human communication system that is language displacement duality discreteness cultural transmission arbitrariness uh, productivity and structure dependence and this set covers uh, other features which are common uh, among both the communication systems okay biped as well as quadrips vocal auditory channel reciprocity rapid fade prevarication non directionality specialization turn taking semanticity and spontaneous usage so in my previous video i discussed these four basic features now today i'm going to discuss these three features so uh, let's let me quickly uh, flip over these slides because already i have covered these so today's topic is arbitrariness so before i discuss arbitrariness uh, let me discuss these signs so idea of sign uh, sign there are three types of signs iconic signs indexical signs and symbolic signs iconic signs are those signs uh, uh, whose image brings the idea of the image Uh, before our eyes let's say if you see the icon of uh, uh, let's say trash bin okay there is a trash bin on your computer and as soon as you see this icon immediately you know that what is its purpose and you put trash into it same goes <coughs> to the <coughs> to, to the image of uh, im, uh, to the icon of a computer as we see the icon somewhere so the image of a computer prop, uh, pops up in our mind 
so these these types of signs are known as iconic sign indexical signs are those signs which point towards something okay like you can say the uh, abbottabad if it is written on the road avelia or abbottabad so it is an indexical sign and the third one is symbolic sign uh, a symbol is something that stands for something else and it is here that language uses these symbolic signs okay symbols so language uses symbolic signs a symbol stands for something okay language is a communication system using arbitrary vocal symbols okay arbitrary uh, i'll explain this uh, topic in the ensuing uh, slides because it is today's topic that what is the feature known as arbitrariness so he, uh, first let me read out these uh, sentences which I have gleaned from uh, the books I mentioned at the start. First sentence is that language uses neutral symbols. Okay. So later on I'll talk what is it. First, uh, when I say symbols, symbols mean words or linguistic forms because language uses linguistic form. Okay. No direct connection between the word dog and the four-legged animal it represents in the next slide i'll explain it and the no iconic relationship between a linguistic form and its referent i'll explain in the next slide it is at the whim of the speech community that what they call the four-legged animal that box okay now let's see what is arbitrariness so on the screen you can see a triangle this is this triangle represents three corners and these corners are actually the segments of a sign what is a sign a sign has three elements or three parts one is signifier the another one is signified and third one is significant what is signified the concept or mental image of a thing Let's say uh, in real life we have this uh, thing uh, known as a dog, okay? This is real dog, okay? Roaming the street, present in the real world. So this dog actually, according to uh, uh, theories of ideas, or uh, idea uh, like uh, platonic theory of ideas, uh, has an existence in our mind, okay? Ideal existence which we know conceptual existence or uh, mental image. So what do we do? So this mental image, okay, is represented through language. So language uses uh, words like, uh, let's say, dog, a speech community known as English speech community, calls this real life object dog. So this sound, sound sequence is used, okay? These, this, this is sound, sound image, okay? Sound image or linguistic form or a word. Uh, in other, you know, uh, uh, Latin, in Latin language, this object is called canis. In French language, it is called ancien. In Urdu language, we call it, it kutta. And in Arabic, it is called kalb. In Persian language, it is called sag. You see, the same object, uh, 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 same object has different linguistic forms. So it means there is no one-on-one -on -one relationship between these forms, okay, and this object that is uh, dog significant. So one community uses these four sounds, okay, because there is a page which is a vowel sound, so. We have uh, these two consonants, okay, and then this vowel sound and this vowel sound. So this sequence of sound is uh, used in order to represent this object. So that's why we say that there is no one-on-one uh, -on -one relationship. Now some other community may call it uh, using another, uh, you know, word or another linguistic forms. So there is no direct uh, link uh, between, uh, you know, when you write this word, let's say 
this okay so uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the image pops up uh, in your mind but when you you know uh, let's say you use the word let's say uh, uh, as I make this icon like this okay this is an icon okay so immediately what comes up what uh, pops up in your mind is flower but linguistic symbols okay these are linguistic symbols so they don't uh, you know create an image of the referent in our mind or this idea signified does not come up come to our mind that's why this is known as arbitrariness arbitrariness means that these symbols are neutral they don't have uh, uh, they, they can't represent this object because that's why uh, it is at the whim uh, of the speech community like someone may call it kutta someone may call it kalb some some community may call it sag and as you can see dog canis and ancient so the actual existence is in our mind that is signified so this signified may have different linguistic forms and these linguistic forms will represent the real object okay the referent or the significant so this is known as sign so language uses symbolic sign these are symbols okay these are symbols language communicates through symbolic symbols but these symbols don't have any direct connection or relation with this object or this idea so they are arbitrary symbol instead of calling this object kutta urdu speech community may have used some other term let's say we could have called this object like uh, alif te kyaf atak so it is up to us that uh, we can instead of saying kyaf te alif we could have said atak so now if we agree upon this word atak in urdu then this object will be named as atak that's why the term is used as arbitrariness now arbitrariness is you know only uh, available or found in human communication system uh, animal communication system does not have arbitrariness however there are certain exceptions in uh, you know uh, in uh, uh, human speech that some of the words of human communication system that is language it is a design feature of language they do represent uh, bring to our mind the image of the object okay the linguistic form does have something in it which uh, you know conjures up the image of the object we are referring to these words are known as uh, onomatopoeic words okay so exceptions as you can see uh, onomatopoeic words are those words which like when we say cuckoo so it's the name of a bird and the sound produced by this bird is is also cuckoo and this bird always uh, when it sings a song the song uh, is in the form of cuckoo 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 like this so yes here we can say that uh, the linguistic symbol represents the actual sound but the, these words are very rare in languages these are known as uh, uh, onomatopoeic words okay so onomatopoeic words are those words which carry the you know notion of the uh, object which repre they represent crash slurp whir, buzzing sound bang okay and squish these are some of the exceptions uh, in english language otherwise uh, there is complete arbitrariness in linguistic forms and uh, the objects they are represented okay so uh, this triangle is known as semiotic triangle okay semiology is a field which studies signs so uh, uh, ferdinand de saussure uh, gave the idea of signified and signifier signifier means linguistic form or the words we use for the idea that is in our mind and third option or third element is significant the object real life object okay i r richard and uh, ogden they also used uh, this uh, you know uh, this is known as a uh, semantic uh, diagram uh, so they also gave this idea okay 
next we move to uh, important and sixth uh, uh, sixth uh, you know design feature of human language which is known as productivity okay some uh, linguists call it creativity it is also known as openness or open endedness okay now human communication system or language it has the ability to produce and understand an infinite number of novel utterances okay secondly we uh, you know continuously create uh, novel or strange utterances utterances which may we may not have heard okay humans can utter a sentence which has never been said before usually it is said that uh, a language uh, you know uh, what we produce whatever we hear but human uh, you know uh, Uh, human beings have this capacity this capability to utter sentences which we may not have heard in our whole you know experienced life so this is known as productivity and uh, when we contrast this productivity uh, with uh, you know human uh, animal communication system so we uh, are wonder struck that uh, animal communication system uses fixed reference okay and they use limited number of signals let me give you an example of cicadas okay they have four sounds basic sounds as you can say bo- uh, uh, they represent uh, the four signals uh, four messages like uh, when cicada is uh, you know seized or picked up uh, or eaten let, let's say you pick it up uh, someone picks it up and wants to eat so whether you catch it whether you pick it up or whether you eat it so it uh, emits only uh, you know the disturbance quack this is one signal second signal is uh, congregation call so whenever the, uh, this uh, cicada gives a congregation call so it it means that let's uh, get together and sing in chorus and two other uh, messages which it it can convey is that when it sees you know uh it's mate and it is uh, at a distance so it gives a courtship call and when uh, it is quite uh, within reach so it gives an advance uh, uh, courtship call okay so these are the four uh, messages which uh, uh, cicada produces same goes with the uh, vervard monkey Mo- vervard monkey have got 36 you know uh, sound basic st- uh, stock of sounds and uh, he uh, it has got only 36 messages which it can convey and uh, grass hopper it has got six uh, you know symbols six messages and bees have got around about 30 messages but they can't alter they can't uh, produce more you know messages more uh, patterns more sentences the way humans can do let me give you an example of vervard monkey so vervard monkey has fixed reference that is whenever it wants to give some danger signals so if some snake is around uh, snake is around mean that it's a danger for this monkey so the signal or the message or the sound it produces is you no know, is chatta chatta when an eagle is attacking from the air it says prop prop to uh, convey you know to other uh, you know members of the community but it can't uh, you know uh, uh, produce a uh, you know pattern like chatter prop like some something like snake is attacking me so they can't produce new combinations let's say let's we compare it with uh, human communication humans can uh, you know when they see a snake uh, they may say that snake is lengthy snake is beautiful snake is about to attack snake is disappearing so we can produce a variety of sentences uh, on such occasions now here is another example of a worker bee okay so worker bee uh, you know uh, has fixed you know communication system it can communicate horizontal distance and direction of uh, source of nectar and uh, bees have no words for vertical or up in the language why like there was uh, you know an experiment conducted 
by you know a very famous uh, uh, B man uh, you know known as Carl von Frisch uh, in 1954. So what did he do? He just put uh, a beehive uh, at the you know let's say there was a, a radio tower or radio beacon. So here he put the beehives okay and he took uh, 10 bees from this hive and uh, at the top of this uh, tower he put you know uh, you know source of food you can say sugar water and these bees were taken up there and they were shown this source of food okay and they, then they were released in the air and they were let you know they were allowed to you know fly away those 10 bees came back to you know this uh, beehive and they communicated to rest of the bees about the location of the bee and uh, after their communication what happened so th these bees kept on roaming like this okay but they never went up and because uh, bee communication system which is usually a dance bees uh, you know have two types of dances round dance round dance round dance means that the source of food or nectar is located or is uh, you know nearby okay nearby so and when they do a waggle dance in which uh, the tail is wiggled so it means that uh, source of nectar is located horizontally and uh, it is at a distance so this is their communica uh, uh, communication system but they do not have any word up in their communication system also they have got 30 30 basic uh, sounds or 30 basic messages and uh, if this word were present in their uh, stock or repertoire they would definitely have uh, you know uh, reached the uh, source food uh, placed at the top as they did not have any up signal up signal or vertical indicator so bees uh, could not reach that point so it means that uh, animal communication system uses fixed reference and uh, they can't uh, uh, create uh, or produce new you know uh, what should i say utterances new new words new word combinations so that's why they are called close-ended communication system and human communication system is called open-ended communication system and there are many examples like uh, we also have uh, you know uh, other examples like uh, a grasshopper earlier i mentioned that it has six uh, uh, you know uh, um, what should i say messages in its uh, uh, stock like uh, if we translate these messages we can say uh, uh, grasshopper says i'm happy life is good another can be i would like uh, to make love and third one uh, let's uh, you are trespa uh, trespassing on my territory now it may in, uh, utter another signal that is she's mine let's make love or oh uh, how nice to have made love these uh, sentences which i've just spoken they have been reported by Janssen as well as uh, you know uh, Janssen in her book uh, the, the Articulate Mammal so the purpose of sharing the, these uh, signals was that uh, vertebrate monkeys uh, which are quite intelligent and worker bees uh, they do possess some intelligence and dolphins they possess element so but they their their uh, communication system is fixed and close uh, ended okay and uh, they can't produce creative and novel utterances which we produce in our uh, communication system now another important feature and the last one is seventh uh, seventh feature is known as structure dependence now i need a little bit of time to explain it and uh, because uh, this structure dependence is a, a key feature of human communication system we can say a design feature of a human language uh, uh, this i have taken from uh, Jan Ichsen book uh, the articulate memo so it is handwritten page so let me explain it 
uh, with an example which I have just gleaned from Yajsen book. She says that let's suppose there is a, a Martian, uh, the person, uh, you know, astronaut uh, from Mars, okay, and he lands on the Earth and hears the following uh, two sentences, okay. You can say, you can, you know, just recall the movie of PK. Let's say a PK from, you know, uh, Mars lands on the Earth and uh, he or she hears these two sentences. Number one sentence was, Aunt uh, Jemima has dropped her false teeth down the lane. Okay, down the drain. And uh, this was the positive sentence he hears. Okay. And another was a uh, question that has Aunt Jemima dropped the false teeth down the drain, down the drain. Now, the, this uh, Martian, uh, the person who landed just on the earth and heard these two sentences. Now, he wants to know how the question has been formulated. Okay. So, he guesses. Guess number one is that. Uh, scan the sentence for the word has so this is uh, his guess that uh, if you if we want to formulate a question we have to scan the sentence and find out you know the word has and bring it to the front so this is guess number one that how the question is framed in in English language second guess can be that trace the word a uh, third word uh, uh, go to the third word as you can say aunt Jemima has so go to the third word and bring it to the front okay pick it and bring it here so these are two guesses guess number one was that uh, locate the word uh, has and bring it to the front and second guess was that count the words and reach third word and bring it to the front and this is how English language speakers on the earth, uh, you know, uh, create questions. Now, this uh, was a mechanical way and this, this did not have any structure. So, what happened? Now, test case. So, this Martian uh, heard this sentence, okay? The man who has run away shouting was attacked by a wasp, okay? Now, now, uh, uh, depending upon you know uh, in uh, uh, his own mechanical counting so he has traced this word has and brought uh, and he has brought it at the uh, beginning to uh, you know form a uh, what should I say form a question and see the clumsiness of the question as the man who run uh, run away shouting uh, was attacked by a wasp so it it was it was you know it is not uh, uh, it was not the right way, uh, okay? Because the ge uh, guess was incorrect. So actually, uh, the man who has run away shouting, this is the subject, was attacked by a wasp. So this was the actual and was should have been removed and uh, it, it should have been brought at the uh, start. Now guess test number two. Test number two was that uh, uh, bring the third word to the front, okay? Now see, uh, this Martian heard this sentence, slugs are slimy. So he counted and he, the third word was this. So he brought it at the beginning to frame a question. So this, these are, in, uh, you know, independent structures. So language has a structural system. And uh, this Martian does not know the inner structure of a language. So, this Martian is relying upon mechanical uh, recognition, uh, you know, process. So, that's why he picks this word slimy, slimy slugs are. So, he thinks that a uh, question has been created, which is incorrect. And second was, Mary has swallowed a safety pin, okay. So, the, the test was that bring the third word uh, at the beginning to frame a question. And he picked this and brought it here. And see, swallowed Mary has a safety pin. A pin. So, see, the question has been framed which is awkward and which is clumsy. 
सो बोथ द टेस्ट ऑफ द मशन हैज हैव फेल्ड ओके वाई दे फेल्ड टेस्ट फेल्ड बिकॉज द मशन यूज मैकेनिकल काउंटिंग ओके स्ट्रक्चर इंडिपेंडेंट ऑपरेशन ओके नाउ लैंग्वेज ह्यूमन लैंग्वेज यूज ए स्ट्रक्चर डिपेंडेंट ऑपरेशन एंड सी द स्ट्रक्चर डिपेंडेंट ऑपरेशन सो आर लैंग्वेज हैज गॉट दिस स्ट्रक्चर सब्जेक्ट एंड प्रेडिकेट इफ द मार्शन हैड नोन दिस स्ट्रक्चर ओके दिस रूल दैट देर इज अ सब्जेक्ट एंड देर इज अ प्रेडिकेट then he would not have committed the mistake now see aunt jemima uh, you know ha- is one unit the man who has run away shouting okay this is a one unit slugs and mary so these are subjects okay let me now place it aunt jemima has drop the false teeth down the drain okay now the man who has run away shouting was attacked by a wasp slugs are slimy mary has swallowed a safety pen pin so now what is the rule rule is that the item that comes after these units first unit that is subject the item that exist in the predicate this is predicate and which comes after the subject should be brought at the front and this way english constitutes its uh, you know questions the verb after the subject in the predicate should be brought to the front to form a question so this is the rule so this indicates that human language is dependent uh, structure dependent and it uses structure dependent operations so it is not an haphazard counting that uh, bring out the third word bring out the fifth word or this, uh, blah blah like this so we use structure dependent operation that's why in english language we have specific structures okay so these structures uh you know these structures have some spe- specific patterning so this was the seventh you know important and unique uh, design feature of human language okay so in today's uh, video lecture i just touch upon uh, uh certain you know uh, key features of uh, human language so in the next video inshallah uh, i'll talk about uh, more uh, design features of human language just let me show you so uh, so far i have covered displacement duality discreteness cultural transmission arbitrariness productivity and structure dependence so none of these is present in animal communication system and even if uh, any of these uh is present in animal communication system so the degree of presence or degree of its uh, you know existence is uh, very you know minimal and uh, so we can declare that human communication system has unique uh, features which are these now these the, the another set of uh, you know features uh although all of these are present in uh, human uh, communication system but they are also present in animal communication system however uh, these features uh, which have been uh, you know presented uh, by american linguist charles hockett and later on uh, noam chomsky uh, in uh, you know his syntactic structures 1957 and later on he kept on uh, improving he also men- mentions all these features uh, but basically uh, they are attributed to charles hockett that he has given us the design features of human language so stay tuned and uh, soon i'll uh, record another uh, lecture in which i'll cover these uh, Uh, design features thank you very much